What's up, Night Owl? Still here back with another Witchlight video, and today we're having a look at Downfall. This video is for dungeon masters who are planning on running the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. If you're a player in a Witchlight game, spoilers ahead. Downfall is the Bullywug village at the very northwestern edge of Hither. Bavlorna Blightstraw lives in a cottage at the center of the lake in Downfall. More on that cottage in a later video. From my experience, Downfall fills out a single four-hour session really well. If you start the session off immediately after the party has dealt with Longscarf or been captured by him, you can wrap the session up as the party is entering Bavlorna's cottage. Now, there's an important caveat to that. By the book, if the party is captured by Longscarf, they are brought to Bavlorna's cottage and they're placed in cages outside of her kitchen. I'll address how to handle that in the Bavlorna cottage video. For this video, I want to present you an option of having the party escape their capture from the Heron Guns on the way to the cottage, and then they explore Downfall that way. By the book, this isn't an option. This is just something that I tried out for one of my parties because I wanted them to explore Downfall and meet with the Bullywogs first before getting to the cottage and exploring the cottage. With all that being said, whether or not your party comes to Downfall as a prisoner or having just beaten Longscarf, the most important thing about this session or about this area, in my opinion, is the relationship between the Bullywugs and Bavlorna. By the book, the Bullywugs are allied with Bavlorna, and a direct quote from the book actually says, beholden to her. But there are some Bullywugs, like the King, who are afraid of her, and Morgort in the holding cells who just outright don't like her. To me, it makes more sense that the Bullywugs are allied with Bavlorna out of fear and use her favor as a means of political maneuvering. Like, for example, the Baron of Buckstump, who is trying to overthrow the current king and is holding crates of animal carcasses to deliver to Bavlorna after they've become the new king. So in my opinion, the most important thing that you should focus on before you run downfall is the relationship between the Billywugs and Bavlorna, because I can assure you, in almost every conversation that your party has with a Bullywug, Bavlorna is going to get brought up. Now let's have a look at the keyed locations. Area 1 is the channel. In the unlikely event that your party defeats Longscarf or pays the toll, or if you decide to have your party escape capture, they will be here at the entrance to the Bullywug village. Now as far as escaping capture, I had two Herringon brigands dragging a wagon with each party member in their own cage in the back of the wagon, and their stuff that Longscarf is giving to Bavlorna as part of the as, as part of Bavlorna's tax. You see, whatever Longscarf steals, he has to give a portion of it to Bavlorna. This is your opportunity to give your party the stuff back that Longscarf stole and to sort of tax their resources for losing the fight. For example, you can take some of the consumables that they won at the carnival, like the cupcake that makes them invisible, the potion of advantage, some pixie dust, things like that. You don't want to cripple the party. You don't want to really hurt them, but you do want losing to have a cost associated with it. So this is just something that Longscarf takes from the party as a sort of, ha, I won, I beat you. From there, I had my two Herringon brigands stop dragging the wagon and take a break by going and swimming in the river. They take off their gear so they're unarmed and the party has an opportunity to break out of their cages. And you can make it really simple because the goal is to break out. I didn't want escaping the Herringons on their way to Bavlorna's cottage to be a focal point in the adventure which is why I made it short and simple. Two Herringon brigands, they take off their gear, go swimming in the river. After they're done swimming, they pass out on the grass. The party has all the time in the world to plan their next move. You could also have the Herringons transporting the party in a skiff through the channel on the way to Bavlorna's. This would make more sense given the environment. You can do wagon or skiff, up to you. Area two is the damaged balloon. This balloon is what's left over after the workshop was set ablaze. There's two Bullywogs here attempting to repair the balloon and three giant frogs are standing guard. If the party talks to these Bullywugs, they will give them direction to King Gullop's gazebo. Area three is the Stepstone Crossing. One of the Stepstones here is a Galeb Durr. If someone steps on him while crossing, he'll be offended and demand an apology. The party gets two chances. If they fail the first, they can try to sing the second apology. Two failed persuasions will result in the Galeb Durr tossing the offender into the lake, alerting the two Marrow that move in and attack. Bullywugs that witness this will attempt to help the party deal with them. Area 4 is the Burned Out Balloon Factory. This building is occupied by a single Bullywug named Duke Ikrins. The Duke is currently dealing with a crisis as the building has recently been set ablaze by two Bullywugs that helped Sir Talavar escape. 
Wigglewog died in the balloon crash, and Morgort is being held prisoner at the holding cells. Morgort stole animated coal from Bavlorna's cauldron and used these coals to set fire to the factory. Area 5 is the Chattering Heads. This area has a row of heads of the former kings of Downfall who have been overthrown. This is also the location where the party will meet Clabberclaw. The heads chat about their own leadership and they undermine each other, and the current king, Gullop the 19th. If the party decides to talk to the heads, they might learn that the current king won the throne by boiling his predecessor, Molub the 16th, in oil. Harry 6 is King Gullop the 19th's gazebo. This gazebo contains King Gullop's throne. King Gullop is here with his pet crocodile Snoodle in a court of bullywug knights and nobles. The king is paranoid that Sir Talavar's escape has made Bavlorna upset with him, and he stole a book recently from Bavlorna to confirm his suspicion. He will ask the party to return the book that he stole to Bavlorna and assure her that he didn't steal it but was only making sure the book was kept safe. The meeting with King Gullop can go one of two ways. If the party shows hostility towards the Bullywugs or refuses to join the Soggy Court, they will be arrested and placed in the holding cells. If the party presents the golden fly that they got from Ikrind, then the king may ask them to deliver Bavlorna's book back to her and assure her that he didn't steal it but was merely keeping it safe. And if the party wants to meet Bavlorna, then the king will ask them to go to the palace and get a new set of clothes before going to her cottage. Area 7 is the Murky Lake. The lake that Downfall is built around is 20 feet deep and is shrouded in fog. The Bullywugs spend their time reading, napping, or playing music while lounging on lily pads or in rowboats scattered around the lake. They are helpful to the party and direct them to King Gullop the 19th if the party needs further assistance. Area 8 is the holding cells. This area is where the prisoners are held. The party is held here if they are arrested at the Soggy Court, and this is also where Morgort is being held for aiding in Sir Talavar's escape. If the party is arrested, they will be put up against Morgort in a trial by combat. Morgort will fake losing so she can be thrown into the lake and then swim over to the balloon and steal it. And she might offer to give the party a ride to the next location if they don't like Clabberclaw for whatever reason. Area 9 is the Proving Grounds. This is where the Soggy Court carries out trials by combat. In order to get arrested by the Bullywugs, the party will have to either refuse to join the Soggy Court or be openly hostile towards the Bullywugs. In either case, Illig, the Baron of Muckstump, will welcome the party into his court if they make enemies out of King Gullop the 19th. Area 10 is Trinket, Bobble, and Charms. This balloon made out of a rain cloud is run by three Darklings named Trinket, Bobble, and Charm. Charm, the Darkling Elder, is their boss and is currently visiting Bavlorna in her cottage. The business is just a front. They work for Indolin Moongrave and they're here to steal from Bavlorna. Trinket and Bobble know that this business is just a front, so they don't really care about selling merchandise. And because of this, they give the party plenty of sass. This area is also a potential location for the unicorn horn needed to finish the campaign. In the event that the party steals this rain cloud balloon, it will take them to yawn unless they have a trained pilot like Morgort to fly them elsewhere. Area 11 is the Sinking Palace. The palace has two entrances, one in the high ground, one at the low ground. The upper level has bullywugs gathered here, some of them resting on pillows. The lower level is submerged in swamp water and has bullywug musicians playing string instruments. Most of the Bullywugs here are nobles and non-combatants, and the party will be unable to enter without permission from King Gullop the 19th, who sends them here to get changed into nobles' clothing before they are allowed to meet with Bavlorna. Area 12 is Bavlorna's cottage. If your party was captured by Longscarf and escaped the cottage, you will start your downfall session here. Area 13 is Big Barkless. Here the party will be provoked by four sprites. The sprites know that the tree that they live in is a tree blight, and if the party tries to attack them, they may disturb the tree blight, which will uproot and attack the party. Area 14 is the Toadstool Patch. Here the party will encounter a wood elf named Octavian, who made a bad deal with Bavlorna and had his heart taken away and replaced with a goat's heart. The process has left Octavian unable to feel or show emotion. If the party retrieves his heart from Bavlorna's cottage and brings it to him, he will gift them with a Pipes of Haunting. The goat's heart will appear on the ground and it functions as a potion of invulnerability. Area 15 is the Bullywug Hut with a chest. 
There are no bullywugs in this hut or nearby, only a chest that contains cookware, fish bones, and a toad. The toad is magical, and if tossed into a pot or kettle of water, it produces a darkness spell. Area 16 is the bullywug hut that contains Illig, Baron of Mudstomp. If the party hasn't received the secret message to join the revolution, then they'll need a DC 15 persuasion check to get through the door. Illig is here plotting to overthrow King Gullop the 19th. The party can get as involved with the Bullywug politics as they feel like, and they can even earn some Bullywug titles for helping Illig. Something else important to note within this hut is a crate of animal carcasses that belong to Bavlorna. Later, when the party meets with Bavlorna, she may request the party to retrieve this crate from Area 16 and bring it to her. Area 17 is the King's Mount. Here the party will find a giant toad and its handler, Vlonk. The toad is King Gullop the 19th's mount, and it likes to play a game called Swallow the Guard. Blanc has been ordered to let himself get swallowed whenever the toad wants to play. Blanc will ask the party to watch over the toad while he goes for a swim to wash off the toad's saliva, at which point the toad will try to harmlessly swallow party members. Area 18 is Bavlorna's Cauldron. This cauldron is heated by animated coals, the same coals that were stolen and used to set fire to the balloon workshop. The cauldron's lid is held shut by an arcane lock spell, and if anyone tries to remove the lid without speaking the password, spittle spew, the cauldron will scuttle away. A magman lives beneath the cauldron and will offer the party the password in exchange for some dry wood, which can be bought from the Darklings at Area 10. As for what's inside the cauldron, the book describes it as bubbling, frothy, gray-black liquid that radiates an aura of transmutation magic when detect magic is used. If any creature drinks a pint of the liquid, they get hit with a polymorph spell, save DC 14. Failure means they're transformed either into a giant frog with a 75% chance or a giant dragonfly with a 25% chance. This location is also a possible location for the unicorn horn that can be used to end a campaign. Area 19 is the Watchtower. The Watchtower is a 10-foot tall platform built on a mound 10 feet above water level. One important thing to note about this platform is that on the map there is a ladder marked on the tower. But the book says that the Bullywugs don't have a rope or ladder set up because they jump to and from the top. And that's all I have for Downfall. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, you know how YouTube works. Hit those buttons, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the Bullywug Village. And if you want to be a part of this D&D community, make sure you join the Discord. Link is in the description. Come by, ask questions, let me know what you think. And as always, I'll see you at sundown.